Hey, everybody. Let's see if we've got this going live. If I can find my own channel. Okay, folks. Bear with us for just a moment here. We are still trying to get Dom on. I've got Dom live on the phone. And I am hoping we can get this going. If I can get to the right screen. Hang on just a second, folks. Trying to get this going. Dom's... Um, this is like the second time we've had issues with doing this. I've run 22 tests today uh, to see if this worked, and it worked every time until I got hooked up with Dom. So um, anyway, let's see where we're at still. Uh, there it. Hang on. should have a feed bear with us please hang on just a second here I do see my feed on here now so it looks like we're getting halfway there um, I'm still trying to get Dom on, literally, as I said. Um, I do have Dom on the phone right this minute. Um, we're going to try and invite him back in. My wife just found a baby bird, so you're going to hear a baby bird squawking in the background. Let me try and invite Dom back in one more time here. Um, let me see here if this will work. Prime time. Okay, we're going to give this one more shot. And if this doesn't work, um, the issue seems to be that uh, Google Hangouts is listed as blacked out over his entire state. Again, I've been online, you know, a multitude of times. I've tested this for five hours. We've actually um, run Skype broadcasts. 20 some of them today between me and my wife and several different uh, computers and laptops. As soon as we went to hook up with Dom, we've got a major sync issue um, from Dom's end. It has to be because my end streamed immaculately from this side. Um, I see his picture down there, but it doesn't look like we are still going to be able to get him. I wonder if you can hear me. It, uh, it does show I'm live with you. Yeah, it shows. I can't. Geez, all I can do is hear you on the phone. Can't hear me on the uh, on your channel. Yeah, I guess I can. Yeah, I think I can hear you. Let me let me let me kill you on the phone, Dom. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I can still. You still there, Dom? You still there, Dom? Yeah, it looks like we don't have Dom on. Yeah, this is getting to be really frustrating here on this end here. Let me see if I can't send him one more invite through a different means. Yeah, the, if, if you guys ever did a live feed and you go to like a, the down report, it shows Google Hangouts a big, huge black box. Well, not black, but a big, huge cloud over all of New York. So it's really annoying. Let me let Dom know what's going on. And this is like, I know he missed a live feed the other day. So this is really getting to be extremely frustrating. Um, let me just tell him. I know this isn't much fun for everybody to watch me sit here type on my phone. Yeah, 
Yeah, again, we've tested this for God knows how long. So this is really, really frustrating. Um, we had some plans today, so this is not what we were looking for. Um, if I can't get him on in just a few more minutes, I'm actually just going to move on and we will just do a, a regular show for a few minutes here. Um, I've got some items that I was going to show out as well, too. So it, it doesn't look like I'm going to get Dom on tonight, unfortunately. Um, again, I see his picture, but um, I just don't have Dom on. Yeah, this is extremely frustrating. Yeah, this is extremely frustrating. Yeah, I see Chris is on here. For anybody who got to see, I was on Chris's channel. It, it seems to be a New York tied issue. Um, again, I've been on all day long, even through Google Hangouts. I ran a test shot. Maybe not just New York, but, you know, I see some other people saying there's some other issues. Always a dark cloud over New York. No clue, never did a live feed. Yeah, um... Yeah, um, good. We're going to try one more thing with this, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get Dom on for us tonight. Yeah, this, this is extremely frustrating for anybody who's had to deal with this. This is just, yeah, let me send one more invite. Yeah, this should work. I mean, we've sent it to the regular sources. He, he shows up on my end just as an icon. So I know that the link and everything's working. But as soon as it gets to to him logging on. Yeah, hang on one more second. Yeah, I see him again, but I still don't have him. Let's give it one more shot and see. Yeah, our goal is to um, is to get um, Skype uh, integrated, and we I've got images. We've got everything integrated with um, broadcasting Skype through uh, OBS. But uh, again, for whatever reason, as soon as I connected with with uh, Dom tonight, his feed was delayed drastically. Mine ran through fine on our our test record on a live broadcast. So. Um, I hate to, you know, void off Dom um, on this, honestly, because I was really looking forward to this. Um, we had some good conversation here that we had planned for the evening. We had some uh, haul items to show. We were going to talk about collectibles. Um, I, again, this is really frustrating. As soon as we get the, um, the audio issue fixed, I'm kind of hesitant to run another Hangouts, um, especially with the Dom report. I looked at it again just a minute ago, and it's just jammed up over his section there's just a ton of people who have reported issues on uh hangouts so you know i don't know what the deal is um i did see someone else who did a hangout um uh, i think it was wade's channel maybe um that i was looking at um wade or, or scott's they both did google and they did not have an issue but again they're not in new york area the map only showed a, a major blockage in new york city area or at least the area where dom is at so that really doesn't help me um, at all. So anyway, it doesn't look like we're going to get Dom on here, unfortunately. Um, I have no other clue on what to do. I can only see his icon on here. Yeah, this is just uh, very frustrating. Yeah, I don't see, see any way to get Dom back on here, unfortunately. Again, I have his icon. I have his link. Everything's fine from this end. Let me... Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to do on this end. You know, I've got an IT degree, you know, I, we've filtered through and fixed everything else, but uh, this literally looks like a outage issue, um, in New York. I, I, it's the only thing I can tell you because this is like, he, he missed, uh, two, I think they've had two broadcasts on his behalf just because of the same issue. And every time I've looked when he's had an issue, the down report literally shows it just jammed up. Um, yeah, I see VPN people talking about. Yeah, we, I looked into Zoom, Chris, as well, too, and it's the same. It's an audio sync. I know Skype and NDI better than Zoom is, is the reason we're, we're doing the Skype. And again, we got it all through 
I could put him on right now with the Skype, but the, it's it's a terrible lag with with um, his voice actually. Uh, and there's no, uh, I don't know. We're just gonna have to work around that as well too. Um, there's not a lot of you know um, directions on using NDI with uh, troubleshooting for OBS for those of you. Obviously, I got the feeds in. I figured out how to split. Um, dual channel, so one's on audio, and that eliminated it on my end, having a second audio feed, because then they came in at the same time, instead of a delay, if you run uh, NDI uh, feed in with sound attached, it actually splits the actual um, feed, so sound will come in either before or after a live, the actual video. Um, again, I bypassed it, it worked fine on my end, but from here, what I have is nothing so um again i don't know what else to tell you here i'm i do apologize for this you know I, again i i set up this we messed around me and the wife for five hours today uh, messing around with skype and all the options every single setting we could adjust in there and i'm left with uh no dom on tonight so uh, again this is extremely frustrating um i hate google hangouts google hangouts is going bye bye anyway they're phasing it out supposedly at the end of this year um, they've got a new service that you technically isn't ready yet for broadcast, so I can't use that. Um, again, Skype was going to be the one we had planned on using. As soon as I can figure out how to get the sound to sync correctly, um, there's no delay option um, with, with doing the NDI feed. So if we can figure that out, um, I will have him on at another day. Um, again, I, I do apologize. This is extremely frustrating. Uh, you're seeing me frazzled right now. Maybe I don't look it, but... Um, yeah, same thing. Um, Dom had the issue with OBS and Zoom didn't work with uh, them either. It's the sync issue. There's, It's the way the feeds are brought in because, um, if I'm not mistaken, Zoom uses the same basic structure as Skype does. Um, anyway. So anyway, we'll just move on. I, I hate to do that. Um, you know, uh, this is just well past the time frame. We're already 26 minutes in. I don't have Dom. I don't have any issues going on. Um, extremely frustrating. Hang on one second. Let's see if this is Dom. Maybe he... Nope. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything on that. Um, some of the issues going on. Um, I've had a lot of questions. Uh, we'll just answer some questions. Let me turn off my phone too because I've got eBay stuff going on like mad today. Yeah, um, sales-wise, um, you know, and cross-listing, I had some questions on. Now, I did uh, shoot out what we did last week and a video on what we sold. Um, and again, it's not a brag. I get a lot of people asking, you know, how much we do, how much this. Um, we did 4200 last week just on the store I share with you. That's not counting my Amazon, my Etsy, my Discogs, any other site or platform that I sell on. Um, so, you know, the last week was the busiest I've ever had on eBay. Um, not just with the store I share, but a combined source of them. Hang on. It just looked like I saw. No, nope, I guess not. Oh, well. Um, I thought maybe he popped in there. Uh, yeah, we'll have to definitely try again. Um, um, I see him on there. Um, and again, we've tested this for, geez, me and the wife tested it. I actually tested it with Dom uh, the other day. Uh, we did get the, the NDI to pick up the signal and the whole works. But the, again, it's, it's a, a delay issue live on instagram and save to youtube yeah that's not going to work either you you can't do do that from instagram and back um the skype is what i've seen other people use i've i fixed all the other issues i got rid of the the echo uh, this the signal was perfect from from you know uh, again between marky and me um without any issues so you know it's got to be literally um uh, an issue with uh i would say dom's logging in through google hangouts maybe or the 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 connections up in that area in general um again we will work on this i promise you um i've been on other ch uh, channels i never had any of these issues i've had chris on we had a slight issue but we did get it going so uh again chris is um thrift shop hustler uh, dom obviously was going to be on he's primetime treasure hunter he is on the feed i actually have a, a link to dom's page down below uh, again, unfortunately, this is just not what we expected. Um, realist, realist, I thank you very kindly for the $5 super chat. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the content that we were looking at. Um, a few things maybe I'll discuss here. I always have a little list of notes here, and I do have quite a bit of little notes on here. Uh, this kind of throws off your groove when stuff like this happens. 
Um, so anyway, let me give me uh, just a second here to uh, find some different topics as we were going to discuss a whole bunch of DOM issues. Um, that didn't work. Um, let me touch on, on third-party apps then because that is one of the questions that we were going to bridge on with DOM. I do Cellbrite. Um, if you don't know what that is, I would recommend you typing it in in a browser and actually opening up Cellbrite and taking a look at that. Um, I had made some comments in, in several of the videos, including one that I posted here about um, how do you own your own listings from eBay. The only way that I personally know to download your listings complete as they appear on eBay is through a third-party app. Now, all third-party apps actually have approval from eBay to actually integrate with eBay. So the, the download process of downloading all of your actual um, information downloads very correctly. I mean, it's got everything in there. It's got the photos, everything tied together. And with that download, let's say I'm downloading all my content from eBay, which is exactly what we started to do and we're almost finished with and I imported it all into Cellbrite. Um, from Cellbrite, a third-party app, and again, it works basically the same way for any third-party app. Um, from Cellbrite then, I can actually broadcast it out to multiple channels. eBay would be a channel, Amazon would be a channel, Etsy would be a channel, and any other source that Cellbrite would allow me to do it with. Those are the main ones that we're worried about right this moment, as well as it'll allow me to do my own uh, store, whether it be Shopify or whatever the case may be. Um, that is the only way for you to be safe. And I talk about spreading your eggs out. Don't keep them all in one basket. That's important in this industry right now. Um, the, the comments that, that were brought up on this were brought up in the video talking about the actual new charges for the new payment system. Um, so uh, again, if you're if you want to know what we're talking about with why that question was brought up, it was brought up over that video. Um, and I had a lot of people uh, comment me. I actually had like six different emails. How do I own my own listings from eBay? And again, you got to pay for it. There's no other other source. You can download a spreadsheet of your um, basic listing information. Again, it's only going to have like titles and, and just basic stuff. You cannot tie that back into uh, another um, you know site or another app through that process. So it's it's useless for most parts, other than you know just accounting for the items you have. Um, so the download straight from eBay to like a Excel spreadsheet, which is a comma delimited uh, a form, it literally is only going to be for record keeping in my book. I don't see any other way to do it because then you'd have to tie each photo back in. But if you use the third party app, the third party app ties everything together. It'll look like a, a listing in Cellbrite basically. And then from there, as I said, you broadcast it out to your channels. We've done that. I own a copy of every one of my eBay listings. If anything happens to eBay, I'm not going to sweat it anymore. Um, and just like the fees on the new payment process, and I'll get to some questions that we have. I know this is kind of sell off. I do have something to show you something neat here too, um, because we were going to swap some stories on, on uh, sourcing and things like that with Dom. So anyway, um, with the new payment process as well, I've delved into it, you know, a lot. I've paid a lot of, of mind into it. I've had people say, you know, don't worry. It's only a quarter. It's only a quarter. At the end of a year, those quarters add up to several thousand dollars for me. Anybody who doesn't want to negate that quarter on multiple item purchases, you know, I don't know why you'd want to negate that. I don't know why on earth you wouldn't want to save that quarter. So if you want to know how to get rid of that quarter where you're not paying it, I show it in the video. It's basically adding in um, some basic uh, options into the actual uh, setup of your listings, and it will allow you to add a 25 cent or whatever you want handling fee to the listings that are above and beyond the original listing. So let's say I sold 10 items to the very same person. eBay now with the, the per item 25 cents, eBay now is going to charge me $2.50 for those 10 items with the payment processing through eBay. Now, if it's just through PayPal, those same 10 items would only cost me 30 cents. So you're going from 30 cents fee to a 250 fee for that one single listing. So I don't know how anybody wouldn't see that as a big deal when that's just one listing I'm now paying 250 extra for that I didn't, it didn't pay before. So I know a lot of people set up options like that. So the first listing in, in this option setup that I've done for all of the listings that would be combined, the first item, I just pay the 25 cent, no big deal because it's covered under my shipping policy. Anyway, I don't actually pay that. I charge shipping at the actual full 
acknowledged rate. So let's say somebody has a three ounce package. I charge the full 379 or whatever it happens to be based on calculated shipping to that person's location. Now I've got a discount through eBay, but I do not pass that discount along to my buyers. That discount has covered the 30 cents before for the PayPal fee. So again, to negate that, I've just added in a option where it will do combined shipping added to it. And we'll add one quarter, 25 cents for every item over and above the first item. So it's going to add 225 to that person's 10 item purchase. It'll just show up in handling. That's all it's going to show up. It'll show up one lump sum number and that'll be it. You know, I won't have to worry about it. I've never had a complaint with any of this stuff I've ever done. Again, these are collectibles. They're not clothing. You're not going to have the same issues you have with clothing, um, with collectibles and stuff like this. So again, when you add up those quarters at the end of the year and you're selling 10, 20,000 items or more, whatever your, your sales are, you know, that's a lot of money. I've opened a second store just to save $2,400. This quarter that they are talking about, they're acting like it's not much at all, no big deal, but that's more than what it, you know, I'm, I could be spending well over what I'm saving on the anchor store. So it's a big chunk of change. Anybody who doesn't want to save $3,000 by at least handling that with a handling fee, you know, just isn't thinking, you know, properly in my book. I know a lot of people, if they're part-time, it may just not be worthwhile. If you're selling clothing or something that you're not going to sell multiple multitudes of, you know, that's fine. I completely understand whatever works for you, but anybody doing a volume or having repeat customers or people that buy multiple items in the same shop, it's a big difference. Again, I do penny pinch my entire store. It's the only way to save money on anything you do. So, you know, uh, people think I'm crazy, but I can tell you where pretty much every dime in my business went to literally every dime. You know, if I dropped a dime somewhere, I'd probably be able to figure out what happened to it. Um, you know, I, I, I've learned as a regional, when you report numbers to a national company, that's what they want. So I, I'm just anal retentive about that. So I know that may seem a little ridiculous and a little bit, um, off topic on that, but that's me. I want to know where every dime is. My paperwork has to match. Otherwise I get frustrated over it. Just like when you're balancing your checking account or, or your business account or whatever you're doing, um, you really need to make sure it's balanced to the penny. So, you know, that's just what I look at it. Carl made a comment here. Um, it, it is a money grab. You know, we were all led to believe that eBay's new policy on that was going to be more of a savings for the majority, pretty much everybody, the way it was led to. The original announcement that, that I um, remember reading, and I went back trying to find it. I don't see it. All I see is the new posting said that there was a 25% or 25 cent fee for um, your each sale. Now, I, I assume that meant just like it was before, which PayPal only charged you 30 cents, no matter how many. I could sell 100 items to the same person. There was only a 30 cent processing fee. So if I sell 100 items now, it's 25 extra bucks to eBay. You know, in, in all honesty, any discount that I would save from going from the 2.9% uh, processing fee that I pay to PayPal down to a 2.7 processing fee I pay to eBay, I'm not going to save a dime. I'm going to pay more because I do a lot of combined shipping, a lot of it, and, and way more than, than this. And I've done the math, you know, so that's why we decided we're just going to add in the processing fee. I know, again, this is off topic. I know people are probably coming here to see Dom. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. The link to Dom's channel and comments doesn't work for me. I'm a subscriber, already, but it doesn't work for you. Let me bring Dom's back up here just so we can uh, pop that back in there for you. I'm going to add it just in case um, that's the case. I'll add it into the comments. I've actually got it now in the um, in the description. So hang on a second here. We'll put Dom's in there, um, and I'll see if I can add it into um, into the actual. Uh, hang on, let me get this in here into the actual comment section or the uh, uh, chat section. Now this should be the correct one. Yeah, you can probably hear a baby bird upstairs. Again, my wife has a baby robin in the house. Uh, let me put it back in here. I think I can just pop it in. Yeah, there you go. That's Dom's link right there. And we are going to add it into the actual comment section because I know this one works. So we will get this in here too. So you've got several ways to get up to Tom's channel. Um, for those who don't know, we are going to be doing, obviously we're going to have to fix the issue uh, with 
the feed, but we are going to be doing a show together, uh, me, Dom, and Chris. Um, so uh, it's coming up soon in this month here, we're hoping. Again, we'll be spending a lot of time trying to fix all these issues so it won't happen again. Yeah, Marky's got a bird up there right now. I don't want to yell. She could probably bring it down, but I don't know what she's got going on with the baby bird. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's squawking up there. Uh, let me pop back up here and see if there are any questions. Again, I know that this is kind of way off topic. Um, yeah, again, as everybody sees, I can go live, but I can't get him on here. Um, let me let me send him one more invite just to, just for the heck of it. Who knows? Maybe this time it'll work. Um, so, Dom, if you're on, I'm sending you one more here. We'll give it one more shot. Maybe it will work now. Hang on, just let me get his email address in there, and we will be good to go. There's his email. So, Dom, if you're on there, I've sent you one more just to be safe. Um, it is to your email address. Hang on just a second here. Let me just drop him a text just in case he's not on. Again, I'm sorry, Ken. This is just not what I expected to be doing. I had much better use of my five hours today than ending up here with still nothing going on. So, again, I do apologize. Let me just drop him another one just in case. Hang on. Sorry, folks. Okay, we'll see if that works. I kind of don't think we're going anywhere with them, but let me just show you a couple things here. I've had a few of these. Um, these are Parade of Stars. Now, one good thing I always end up running into on these, um, and I've found many famous people's autographs. This actually has autographs. So I'm going to have to figure out who these people are on the front. But inside of this, it's got like Kitty Wells' autograph in there. Now, I don't know who some of these folks are. I've had records by Kitty Wells, um, and I'm sure 100% these are all legit. Um, there's a bunch of people in here, many pearls in here. Um, Bill Moss, if you know who Bill Moss is, um, I don't really know who he is though. Um, I don't even know if I've heard of his name. Um, this one's autographed, but I don't know who she is. It almost looks like Dolly Parton, but, and it does say Dolly on the back. I don't really know who that might be. I guess that's possible. That's Dolly Parton, but I don't really know when she started, but it's autographed. looks real. Um, this is a purchase that I made just for a few dollars. The reason I purchased it, because I saw Bill Monroe, um, and it's actually autographed. I'm 100% sure this is his real deal. It's got information where it was signed at on the back. Um, and he's a blue gra uh, bluegrass legend. Um, something like this, they go for 40 or 50 bucks. Again, it's not some pricey, huge, horrendous thing. I paid a few bucks for this. It actually has Wanda Jackson's actual autograph photo, her signatures on the back as well, too. I picked up like a hundred and some odd autographs this week. So we were going to talk about autographs a little bit here too. Um, various different things and from many different sources. Um, you know, that's what I look for stuff like that. Um, there's some rockabilly people who signed this too. Um, Johnny and Jack have a rockabilly classic. I think it's over the hills. I think it's the one they do. And they've actually signed this as well too. So a book with multiple autographs on it. And there's more in here, more um, professional singers and things in here too. Quite a few more actually. Books like this, I usually get three or 400 with that many signatures on it. The one I really wanted to find because Patsy Cline is actually in here. Um, there's two people that actually died since this was printed um, in the same year this was printed actually. Um, and actually he actually made a note on Patsy Cline dying. So I thought that was rather interesting, but um, I guess Patsy Klein died after that. But anyway, that's just uh, what we were going to go into a little bit of depth and stuff. Um, we were going to show some items. So anyway, let me see if he's got a chance to try it one more time. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going anywhere with them, um, unfortunately. But anyway, um, I know it's frustrating again. So anyway, if anybody has any questions here, um, you know, I had a video I could have uploaded, but we thought for sure we were going to, to have this to go on. I'd like everybody who's on my channel to at least know who Dom is and, you know, check his channel out as well. Uh, just because we are going to be doing stuff. I talked to Dom and Chris as well, um, you know, on the phone, even these days. And, you know, we chat, we email the whole works. Um, we're on Facebook together. 
Uh, so, you know, um, these guys are really good guys. Chris included. He's on that list of the very few people, uh, other resellers that I do stuff with. Um, similar backgrounds, similar interests, similar likes, similar stuff we sell. So, you know, um, I don't mind promoting, you know, people like that. There are many YouTubers, though, that um, aren't really interested in the same thing and promoting ideas and thoughts and knowledge. They're only interested in, you know, doing videos for money. Yeah, I'd like to make a bunch of money on YouTube, but that's not really the the, the bottom line goal on me. You know, I don't do any of the, the catchy or kitschy videos trying to get people in and stuff. You know, you either like it, you don't. My channel grows slow. That's fine. I'd rather have more people that are interested in watching than just get a whole bunch of subscribers that never watch the channel. And I know if you look at a lot of a lot of other channels, even some that have over 100,000, their view count is still low on the video. So, you know, I'm, I'm not really fighting or worrying about what my subscriber count says or any of that kind of stuff either. So, you know, I'm, I'm fairly mild mannered. I don't go out of my way to to do stuff. Stuff like that so anyway again we'll pop back into this see if there's any questions on here dom is on the ticket so i'm assuming the interwebs are broken yeah it's it's hangouts it's his hangouts it's, he can't broadcast from his area um that's literally what i see the issue i'm just going through some of the comments on here I deliver to Bustle. I always get everything there is the morning, so I can scan and day. Um, for those who don't have mail picked up at their house, I have everything picked up at the house. I don't go to the post office at all. Um, the only time I went was a couple months ago when I sent a registered first class to England for a $1,200 record. I wasn't going to trust that any other way. The person wanted to send it that way. They paid the extra money. You know, because it's, I think, uh, $14 and then so much extra to send it registered, if I'm not mistaken. I very rarely do something like that. But I have everything scheduled in um, the U, uh, U.S. Postal Service's site for pickups um, every day of the week. They pick up six days a week. Um, it's scheduled. And I schedule as far in advance as the post office's site will let you do. So I would honestly recommend everybody using the pickup service. As long as you're working out of your facility, your your warehouse, wherever you're working out of, have them pick it up at your facility. And I made a note, they pick it up at my front door, they knock. Nothing sits outside. It saves me gas, time, effort, and the whole works. I know when they're coming pretty much every day. Um, you know, it, it's just a much more convenient way to do this is to have them pick up at the house. Um, you know, if that's your gung-ho on, on delivering them, I do master scan sheets and I'll have several of them. I have been comparing them. I have not, and we've done master scan sheets way in the past. There was issues with them in the past. So we used a third party app to actually ship so we could combine all of them together. That there's linkage issues and things with that too. So we literally switched back to doing scan sheets per store. So we have to do a couple of them, but every single time the post office comes to pick up packages here, they scan the master scan sheet and they all show up. I have not had a single, my uh, late shipping rate is zero. And I'm not trying to brag or make up anything. That's It's literally zero with those scan sheets. So if somebody's telling you the scan sheets don't work, they work fully fine. I send out a ton of items and I'm not, again, trying to you know push off that I do a lot of business, but I send off a ton of items. And if it keeps track of the amount of items that I have, you know, uh, I, I fully trust the scan sheets to work. You know, it, it happens every time they've scanned that sheet. And I watch them scan the sheet. They show me the screen. I don't ask the, the, the standard lady, but the new guys I do if somebody different shows up. So, I, again, this master scan sheet works. If you only got one store, there's no big deal to it. It's going to save you a world of pain waiting in the post office. You know, back in the day when we first logged on and first started doing eBay, you had to wait in line for everything. And sometimes there'd be like six people doing eBay in front of you and it would tie up the entire post office. Christmas was just impossible. And and I was, um, you know, I've lived in other areas. I lived in Virginia for many years and we did it in Virginia. And it sometimes would take this 45 minutes at the post office before they integrated everything in here. So, you know, everybody's got it pretty easy compared to how it used to be. So anyway, that's just my take on it. Um, and shipping wise, I see people talking a little bit about shipping. If they're paid for before 11 o'clock in the morning, the, every single item that was paid for before 11 a.m. is shipped that day. Every single item I have. And I do the same thing on Sundays. It's one of the ways to get your feedback and everything up. Um, you know, it, it's just something that I've done forever. It's always helped my, my benefits on this. It's always helped my feedback. I get great feedback by shipping uh, quickly. 
you, you know, you can go look at my feedback and see the comments I get, you know, so uh, welcome everybody in here. Um, Michelle, Aaron, how you doing? Um, Galaxy 5000, welcome. Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, welcome. Uh, J.I., welcome. Yes, I know who you are. David uh, Rubino, welcome. Um, if I missed you on the top, I do apologize. I again, this isn't our normal feed. Rock and roll reseller, welcome. Thomas, how are you doing? Mimi, welcome, welcome. Uh, I do see your dog after you made that comment in the email. So, yeah, I see you there. Um, again, we love animals. The wife's up there feeding a baby bird with earthworms right now that my son picked out of the yard. Welcome, Robert. Uh, let's see who else we got in here today. Uh, again, I'm not going to ask you to hit the like button today because this is not what we expected. If you feel feel fine with that, that's fine. But um, obviously, that's not what we wanted to happen today. Welcome, Clutch Carson. Interesting name, Clutch. Um, probably not your real name, but who knows these days. KRB, welcome. Uh, let's see who else we have in here. Glenn Mott, welcome. Thrift Ease Me. I can hear Dominique through the phone. Yeah, you can hear him through the phone, and that's about it. I almost thought we could do it through the phone, but I, I don't know if that would be appropriate either. Old school call and show. Yeah, and I honestly did think about that. I did. Poor Dom. Yeah, how you doing, Sue? Uh, again, everybody might not even be on anymore because, again, we've lost Dom. Uh, Mr. Mom Vlog, salutations back at you. Remember the movie when it came out with, um, oh shoot, what's his name? Michael Keaton's in that. So love to see the totes again. Yeah, you've got the totes. We were going to pull some stuff out and stuff. So, um, you know, it, it's just it's just one of those days here. You can pretty much see. I think I actually still have the green screen. No, I don't have the green screen on today. Um, this is my wall of, of uh, sales items. Pretty much everywhere else is stuff that's not up. Um, I originally was going to show a shot from the other side where you can see some of my back stock. Um, in fact, I'm going to do something I usually don't do. We'll show you something. The light might be kind of bad, but um, there's a wall behind me with a ton of shelves. Everything you see in the shelves behind me is not listed. This is just the recent stuff that I've gotten to. Um, the shelf with paper on it, you just see crammed. There's about 120 or 130,000 pieces of paper on that shelf. Cards, postcards, trade cards, labels, man, I, whatever you can think of is on that shelf. Every single tote in there is cram packed full. That's just part of the paper. Most paper items are in boxes, in all honesty. That is part of um, literally uh, some of my back stock. Now, if I walked around to the other corner over here, you're going to see a stack of about, I don't know, 70 boxes full, 14-inch cube boxes, just full of, of back stock. In another building, in, in a warehouse that used to be my father's um, workshop, I have 200 and some odd thousand uh, records. So I've got a ton of back stock. We've been grappling with a full-fledged warehouse for a while. I don't technically need one unless I start to crank those out. If I crank out that many listings, I would have to hire you know, a small little army to make any dent in it whatsoever. Because again, I still buy. Um, usually what happens on me buying and why I have so much merchandise, I know people think that's crazy. and I'm not a hoarder. But basically, if I buy a big lot of, say, five or 10,000 items, we'll, we'll just talk about records because I got more records than, well, I probably have as many records as I have vintage paper items. I'll buy five, 10,000 records. Usually, I have to drive to Detroit. Um, last big group I got, I got from a distributor who used to supply them 20 some odd years ago. It's been sitting in a warehouse for 20 plus years. They used to do jukeboxes. Um, that is honestly the, the best bet. And I hooked up with these type of people by calling around to companies that serviced um, music for that type of industry. So look at that type of source. I haven't called that out before. Um, that's literally where I got my first contact was a distributor for jukeboxes. They have a ton of records. Now, what you're going to have to find if you're looking for that type of quantity is one that hasn't been in business for a while or has a huge amount of stuff they haven't messed with. Um, but when I buy these types of purchases, I buy a huge lot. I look through enough, as I say, I look through enough to know I'm going to make some money. I pull out the high dollar ones and I sell those right off the bat and I get all my money back. So I may sell 
10 records and pay for 5,000 records off of selling 10 records. And I know that may sound crazy. I can get sometimes 5,000 records for just a few hundred bucks, depending. Um, and, and why can I get them that cheap? Because most people don't want to look through 5,000 records, or maybe they have looked through them and pulled out what they thought was the, the best ones. I almost always find stuff that the other people miss. Most people go after... Um, uh, like uh, R&B classics, rock, rockabilly, and things like that. I go after exotica, lounge music as well. I do polkas. I do world music. I do, um, uh, let's see, big band cells. Um, I'm talking about mostly 45s in that range. Usually when I'm buying 5,000 or 10,000 or 45s, let me just make sure that's straight. I do have a video where we did find uh, well over 8,000 LPs at a real reasonable price. Um, uh, again, the, the rule of thumb here, hang on. I think we, uh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you very kindly, Carl. I do honestly appreciate that. Love the view of non-listed stuff. Looks like my three closets. If you could see, I've got hallways of shelves like this and I'm not exaggerating. We've got like 1200 feet, square feet of shelving just filled with stuff like this. This is the stuff that's come in recently. Um, if I show you this video next week, things are going to be switched around because we're putting in another counter area to actually have another employee in this area. I have a max of one, two, three, four, five, six. I can have seven people listing and two people photographing at the same time. That's when I run out of space. Now we have a full down six foot or I think maybe it's an eight foot table that we've used for garage sales. Now I could set that up. I've got more laptops than I have space right now. Um, so we're clearing off one more counter space with window to bring some more light in here and kind of um, having another area to list where you see that paper to the right of it where you see the glass bottles and stuff in that shot is going to be a, another listing station. So, you know, I want to be able to have a fuller house um, so I don't have any issues of wondering where I'm going to move people around. It gets to be a big hassle um, having a bunch of people list on the same day because you've got to schedule everything. You've got to have the items they're going to list, what they're going to list, you know, the, the photographs have to be ready or they're going to have to shoot photographs. Um, again, Carl, thank you very kindly on that super chat. Um, again, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, again, I do understand if, you know, I don't have as many viewers today because it didn't come out the way we wanted it to today. Um, just the fact of nature. Um, I'll check to see if we got some questions in a few more minutes here. My evening was pretty much uh, booked out for this. So I've got, you know, a, a good little while here where we can um, do a chat on here. Uh, hang on, just making sure this isn't down. Yeah, I think he's, he's um, same problem. Yeah, there's nothing going to happen with Dom. Um, I'm going to probably put a call into uh, Google tomorrow and just see what we can find out on that. Because um, this is really frustrating from my end. But uh, anyway, on, on what I call backstock, most people would call that a dead pile. Um, let, let me just show it. Well, let's talk about that for just a minute here, too, because I don't usually show this. And I've got the green screen off today, so I can show you a little bit here. Um, again, the shelf we're looking at right now is just the newest stuff. And, and I'm not exaggerating. This is the newest stuff I got. These are items that I've gotten lots. Um, there's one that says um, Victorian cards, all 600. That's a price. That's what I paid for it. So, um, you know, everything you see here, some of them are priced. Uh, so don't get me wrong. Some of these have prices on them. This is literally um, the, the recent stuff. So when I go to pull something, they're coming off this shelf to list um, or I'll be moving these and boxing these and moving it around later on. Uh, again, there's just the one shelf you see with the, the, all, let's see, there's three totes on the far left. Um, that shelf is literally like 125,000 pieces of paper to sell. This isn't some fantasy world. This is literally what's on the shelf. The shelf on top of it probably has about 60,000 pieces of paper behind those empty, um, rolls from the tape dispensers is a box full of around 10,000 postcards. Um, and you can actually see some postcards sitting up on the edge there. I've got some electronics, some other stuff. Moving over to the other side, this shelf you see here with the glass bottles is going to be uh, a workstation. I'm going to put a sheet of melamine down on that. And there's a window behind that that I usually have blocked off. Um, and it's actually going to be right there. You can kind of see my, my light on there. There's just a oodles of stuff in here. When this shelf was full, we've actually started and started loading up stuff on another shelf on the other side. Again, everything you're seeing on these shelves, for the most part, I've already got my money out of. This is all free. And I'm not, not uh, exaggerating in any way, shape, or form. I buy big bulk. 
I sell one or two, three, four, whatever it takes to get my money back. I list those quickly. And then everything else is just freebies. It just sits there. Um, and these shelves go a, around the corner. There's many behind me. There's double backed rows behind me. There's hallways of these shelves. Um, you know, I, I've got just stacks of boxes. I've got a, a pallet rack as well, too, which is full of boxes. Every single closet in this area is full. And I've got a huge walk-in closet. Again, back stock is not a issue. Don't think of it as a dead pile. Think of it as back stock, unless you've got money into it. I can afford to do this. I can afford to have this much stuff in here. These shelves are 55 bucks. If I got to add another shelf to keep more back stock, that's fine. And again, I don't go to garage sales. I haven't been to any uh, thrift store. I haven't been to um, a flea market recently. I have been to a few uh, estate sales, but I don't source like everybody else. I am literally, if it wasn't for the fact that I have pickers, I probably wouldn't have sourced for you know the entire last month. In all honesty, I know, again, it's not something most people can do. I, I just, it's hard to, to fathom how much stuff we have um, without seeing it in general. And, and, and again, uh, it's quantity I get, and it's not just quantity, it, it, it's quality. Um, most of the stuff I sell, and if, if you're in Patreon, I just posted three videos that, that were uh, about an hour and a half in, in total length. I mean, I go into what we used to get before we had pickers. So, you know, smalls are always popular for us. I can sell stuff that, you know, 10 other sellers walked by and still get money out of stuff that those 10 other sellers passed on. You know, that's why I don't, I don't have the same process as everybody else. Uh, we sell on multiple platforms. I've bought for years and I've done the same thing for the last five or six years. We buy in big bulk. I sell a few items and all the rest is gravy. Again, it's going to take anybody else some time. I, there are people in my Patreon group. And again, it, I can't say it's because of me. They have looked out outside the box. There are people in my Patreon and as well, people that aren't in Patreon that are, are subscribers to this channel that have found sources like I have. So, you know, no matter what you think or, or what, you, what your, your response is on that, people have been able to do and mimic you know, and find these sources that the same basic principle that I've done, I can't give it all away on where to go, where to shop, but I can a hundred percent tell you that this stuff shows up in bulk quantity. I look outside the box, you know, all these items are, are loose as well. They're ready to list. I don't have any, any issues to do with them. I do repair paper though, which I have shown in Patreon as well. So, and Patreon has seen that, but, uh, but again, it, it's, it's the source finding the best source for these. It's, it's having, you know, eight people that call me that, that I don't have to run out and, and drive a day, eight hour day for going to garage sales. Again, I did garage sales for years. Um, before we went full time on the weekends, I did garage sales in for pure enjoyment. Of, if, if nothing else, I used to do flea markets. I actually set up at flea markets. I've actually set up in antique stores as a vendor. Um, you know, I've done every gambit um, that you could possibly imagine. I've been reselling for over 40 years, you know, since I was seven, I've been swapping stuff. So not to bring up the past, but it's in my blood, you know, um, once you get to a certain point, you hopefully will be in the same boat. Again, there are people who watch my channel who have volume, who do 10,000 plus in the store that, that their main store, um, a, a month. That is not a crazy number. I know if you're just starting off, you know, you're, you're going to be looking at this as, you know, how the heck can I get there? I started at one listing the very first day, just like everybody else does. There's, there's no other way to get there except putting in the work. I could not get here without Marky, my lovely wife, without her help in, in just supporting what I do in every way that, that, that she can. I wouldn't be here. So, you know, for those of you who are a single one person show, you know, I, 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 I wish the best for you, and I really hope that you can bring somebody else into it. Um, obviously, me and the wife just, you know, have an income from the business. We don't pay each other or anything like that. Well, I should say we we didn't. Uh, this year, we did start a S-Corp, so anyway. Um, but the point on this is that, you know, I couldn't be here without help. I couldn't be here without labor. Um, so there's the, one of the biggest things I get is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to run labor. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. As a sole proprietor in most states, you can have 
actual employees. You don't have to do any special things. Um, I pay them directly. I have an accountant. I They're on my payroll. They're physically on my payroll. I pay workman's comp and the whole works. If you pay an employee 10 bucks where I'm at, it costs me about a dollar extra. So I'm paying out 11 bucks an hour to have people work. And again, that's once they've been here with me. We don't start them off um, every time at the same same base rate. You know, one of my employees is going to get a raise here um, real soon here just to, because he's been really working hard. Um, is that somebody with the baby bird? Yes. You it's you have it with you? It's a baby robin. It, it It's abandoned. You want to show the people what a baby robin looks like if anybody's interested? Marjo, bring the baby robin down. If you want to see the baby robin, I thought she had it right here. I thought she was bringing it down. But anyway, um, hang on just a second. We're going to be quiet for just a second. If anybody's interested, I know this is off topic, but. It's, she was trying to, she was following a baby starling. Oh, there. geez. You can hold it up. That's that's a baby robin. I'm not going to touch it. It's a fledgling. Um, it looks like it's pretty darn healthy, actually. She doesn't know how to hunt, and she can't fly that well. No. This is a baby robin. It literally just got, she just picked it up just a while. We've got a big fenced-in yard with um, big bird feeders. Um, we get hundreds of birds in our yard. I mean, she's got like three feeders and bird, bird, a bass all over. You can take it back up. I think they know what a bird looks like. Come but. On. We've had them actually hatch in our yard on several occasions, including on my chair on my deck, four feet from my back door. You know, they're 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 brazen birds, if you know robins. They're really cool birds, though. So I love birds. We've got a hawk that comes into our yard and actually snags doves. That's like one of their main feeding thing. They'll they'll nab a dove in a dove in mid-flight. So anyway, we love sitting outside. I put a canopy up for the wife the other day. I built it from scratch out of um out of galvanized pipe and I ordered off eBay. I, I got uh, 21 square yard or uh, it's 21 yards of nautical outdoor fabric. Um, it's coated waterproof for 64 bucks delivered. And it's like mint. I priced it out. It was like $32 a yard anywhere else. It's 60 inches wide. Anyway, a long story short, I spent a whole day last a week or so ago building my wife a canopy from scratch, stitching it all ourselves and the whole works. But anyway, um, Let's see where we're at here. Uh, again, let me go back to this because I I don't think I got a ton of questions here. But um, let's just talk about sourcing again here because um, uh, yeah, I got a lot of uh, sorries and thank yous. Again, I, I appreciate all the support and everything we do get. I know I got 88 um, people watching. But again, I really wanted Dom on. Um, I've gotten to talk to Dom and Chris um, you know, quite a bit lately. Um, you know, if we live closer, we'd probably hang out and do stuff together. Um, you know, uh, you know, we've got many similar backgrounds. But anyway, I just feel bad for Dom because he had a, a trying experience. And we were just talking about what happens this, what happens that. Um, you know, we were almost debating on running the feed with the sync uh, voice synced up. But it was just terrible. So anyway, uh, back to sourcing now. Again, I, I, traditional sourcing um, for most people is the garage sales, thrift stores, um, you know, all those kind of places. Again, I did that for years of my life, 20 plus years of sourcing. In the last, say, four or five years, things have changed for me. And I can, again, I'm going to go back to hiring people. The one factor that changed my life was bringing in multiple employees. And, and again, I hired people working for people as a regional manager and as a district manager. When I was a regional manager for Einstein Brothers Bagels, there was 31 stores under me, an average of 110 employees per store. That's how many people were under my my wing that I was responsible for. We're talking a lot of people. When I worked at Disney, there was a thousand people probably in my area. Um, I didn't want to deal with more employees. So I'm going to say that straight out. I totally did not want to have to deal with employees on my own. I didn't want to hire people on my own um, personally. I didn't want to have to deal with that aspect. We waited a year. I procrastinated because I was nervous on implications and things along that line. We, me and the wife said it. In fact, it's probably the wife's reasoning that we actually did it because she's like, you know, what do we got to lose? If we, if it didn't work the first month, we would just tell them it's temporary. If it works, boom, fine. We actually started with hiring my kids. I know a lot of people will just pay them under the table. If you pay somebody under the table, you can't account for the loss from your income. I mean, it, no one would probably catch it, you know, accountant wise, you know, it would just be coming out of your own pocket. But the point is, why do that when I can actually deduct all that labor and all my fees, my accountant costs and whole works from my actual uh, uh, labor? So 
that's where we went. We hired the kids. It worked. You know, the kids couldn't do a lot because they're in school and summer wise is a different story. We had people working through the morning today and the whole works. Once we hired, started to hire their friends, things really started to change for us. It gave me more time to do things. It gave me more time to solidify these contacts that I had. I got my pickers, you know, I had a few, just a couple decent ones before I started to hire. The first one I had, I had after I, I brought Marky in. Um, but once we started to hire these other people, I was really able to go out and, and converse and spend time in places where these people were at and, you know, converse with the people and seek out new areas. And, and we did uh, actually get the pickers through all that. Without that extra labor, this would have never happened. You know, I see people showing, you know, in fact, somebody sent me a death pile today. I'm going to call it what they call it. They call it a death pile. If you've got money into the merchandise, it's a death pile, I guess you could say. If you're like me and it's paid for because you bought it in bulk and you sold a couple items, it's just backstock. I've got nothing into it except the fact that it takes up space. And I've got the space. In fact, I've got a little extra space if I need it. Um, maybe not in the correct area. It might be up on a top shelf or something, but or underneath shelves, uh, something along that line. But th the point of it is, if you don't have anything into it, don't think of it as you know a detriment to your business. Um, it, it's just taking up space. I've got nothing into this stuff, so not to beat a dead horse here. But let's see if we got any questions in here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I am very frustrated over this, to say the least. Do you sell the non-authenticated autographs on eBay? Those all look legit, but I found that to be a problematic. This is legit because I know where it came from, basically. I trust the source on this, this booklet here. Some of the other items I've shown, um, I trust the sources on them. Um, if they're not marketed as, you know, hey, this is some autograph, I, I got like nothing into this. I'm not exaggerating. To, to the person who sold this to me, it wasn't anything. It, it's just a book with some, some writing on it, you know? That's how they take it. I do list things without um, authentication on eBay. Um, and the, I've only authenticated um, one autograph before. I had a couple Elvises. One of them turned out to not be legit, but one did turn out to be 100% legit. So I've actually sold the Elvis record with the autograph on it for $1,700. No exaggeration. That's what I sold it for. So just FYI, I'll, I'll shoot that one out there. I would love to have gotten more money for it. I talked to uh, several collectors before I did sell it. Um, and again, I, I spent, you know, a couple hundred bucks to have it authenticated. Um, so, you know, I have a couple hundred bucks into it with the price into it. Um, take home wise, I sold it off of eBay. So I literally made about $1,400 off that one Elvis autograph. I didn't really lose on the other one because I didn't pay anything really for it. So I have one more here that I'm debating on getting sent in. That's the only ones I've ever sent in and spent the money. When you send in autographs uh, for authentication, I usually go through Amazon's um, offers because you can get a discount on there. But even with the Amazon discount, it's over $200 for an Elvis autograph to be authenticated. And why? It's because there's so many forgeries out there and auto pens and things along that line. So uh, so it just depends on who you're sending one in for. Now, if you're sending one in for like a modern day star that was on some TV show or something, you're probably only going to pay like 25 or 40 bucks for it with a discount through Amazon. So if you got an Amazon account, you get that service with it. Again, you still have to pay, but it's, it's a reasonable rate. So on Amazon, though, I won't list any autographs on it. That's a no-no in my book. Um, when you get into selling stuff like that at Amazon and you send in your forms to get on gated, you actually have to acknowledge that you're going to authenticate every item on there that needs authentication. So that would be like a first edition book or like a um, uh, with an autograph, I'm saying, um, or like an autograph in general. They have to be graded to be on, at least in the collectible section. And I don't want to have any issues, so I just don't post them on Amazon. You know, you can post a few. Some have sold on Etsy before. It just depends on what type of material it is. Now, if it's an artist-related item with an autograph on it, I have had luck selling some on Etsy. Uh, just FYI. So uh, that's pretty much what I do on autographs. I'm an autograph collector 20-plus years. Yeah, I, I do like autographs. I missed out on a Craigslist one like three years ago, somebody had 300 plus Star Trek autographs, many of the same ones. They had like seven awesome Leonard Nimoy ones in there and somebody nabbed them up for like 500 bucks. Um, and I ran into some of the ones that they had sold to somebody else. They were, most all of them were, were legit, at least the ones that I saw. Um, and cause I know somebody who had some of those graded, they got them like 
two two steps down. So the person who bought them sold some to a local company, a local business, and then that local business sold some. And I know somebody who bought some from that local business. So I know the chain of custody for things like that too. So you know, with autographs, that's that's what I do with them. I, I very rarely send one off just because of the money involved in it. Um, I just, uh, let Michelle, I just reached my eBay listing limit. Call eBay and ask them to give you a higher limit. That's all you got to do to get um, more limits. And so, it used to be where you could just click a button and it would um, sometimes automatically just give you some more listings without calling. If you don't have a, an option that says um, increase my um, listings per month, um, I would just call them. As long as you've got a, a good standing on your account, you've been on for two or three, four months and you haven't had any issues, chances are they're just going to raise it. We can list like... Um, I think we're up to like 4.5 million items and $25 million I can list on Amazon or on uh, eBay right now. Those are my limits. That's what I have as a limit. I'm pretty sure that's it. It might be, might be more than that in the amount. Maybe it's four, four, four million items or something along that line. Again, I've hit the, you know, or called or asked to be raised many times, even when we didn't need to, just so I'd have the ability of something changed. Who knows? You know, it, it doesn't hurt at all. So it's not going to hurt you. Give them a call if you want to get your yours raised. Usually they'll just do it. And they may add only a couple hundred or a couple, maybe even a, a thousand more. Either way, call them up if you, you can't find that out. Question, what do you think of viability of vintage print ad business on Amazon? They're allowing standalone print ads to be sold by at least some sellers creating new page listings. They're listing them in the wrong section, Aaron, if they were doing that. Print ads go in the advertising section of collectibles. That's the technical category they go into. If you're listing them anywhere else in another category, you're going to have to get an exemption for every single print ad you put up. And I can't guarantee they're even going to allow you to get an exemption for some of those. They're going to tell you that they have to go through the collectibles department. Now, I've got some folks that are actually still trying to get in there. It took me 11 different submissions over a 31-day time frame. I don't know where they're at now, so there might be twice as many people trying to get in. It may take you three months to get in or two months to get in. I don't know. It says they're not accepting any applications at this point, but you can get your name on the waiting list. It said that when I applied. It honestly said the exact same thing. That wording has not changed in four years or whatever it's been since we, we got on Amazon. Um, we were on Amazon a while ago. Once they raised the fees for FBA books and stuff, we stopped doing it. So anyway, we, we got back in, we, we did all the spiel and got back in and decided that if we're going to get back in, we're going to do collectibles on Amazon. So I do sell print ads on Amazon. If you're in my Patreon uh, group, you saw the biggest collectibles um, seller on Amazon, probably the biggest, I would say. And you saw print ads in there. And I know there's quite a few people that are in my Patreon on here, including Carl. So you know what I'm talking about, Carl. People do sell those kind of things on Amazon. Um, you know, and the, the one I showed is probably selling a couple thousand items on Amazon in the collectible section every single month. He's He dwarfs me. And I've got close to 60,000 active listings just on eBay between uh, several stores. So, and this guy dwarfs me on Amazon with collectibles. So those options are out there. Uh, I'm telling you, I sell a lot of stuff on Amazon that people think, and there's no way you sell that on Amazon. I hear that all the time. One of the big areas on Amazon that does sell and, and does sell very well are 78 records, believe it or not. And I just sold, I think, 745s on Amazon um, uh, yesterday morning to the same person. So that was a big plus too, which I was kind of surprised because usually I don't get multiple purchases on Amazon for stuff like that. So um, hopefully that answers your question on that. Like with the print ad listing, it, most people list them in home in the home section or the actual book section. List in the book section, you have to have an ISBN number or some other tie-in number or have to be on gated in the category category section where you can create your own listings. You can't do that without having that option. So every, again, every one you have, you're going to have to um, get an exemption for, and it's just not that easy. You're probably going to, if you do it that way, probably going to get hit and told that you can't list them in that section. That's was that's my experience on that. Again, when I list an item in, in the collectibles section, I can do historical, I can do vintage vinyl, um, a collectibles in general that has entertainment section, so I can list anything in entertainment collectibles. Um, I can make up my own AISN number. I don't have to get any exemption from this point on, or well, from years ago, um, the last three or four years. I can just create my own number. All the bin numbers you see in here, I can use for my AISN or my assigned number, my, my inventory item number. Amazon does all the rest from there once you get on gated. 
So, you know, that's the gist of it. The only thing is with that, you can't list those bin numbers in the title. So we've had to move things around. So you're probably going to see massive, once we start to roll out full-fledged um, cross-listing, I'm going to kill all of my eBay listings as they end, well, like a couple hours before the end. And then I'm going to re-up them from Cellbrite. So they won't have any of the bin numbers on them anymore. So you won't see any bins on any of my, my titles after a certain point here. That's the only way I can safely cross list. But anyway, I know I went a little bit on circle on there, but anyway, let's move on here. Oh, hang on just a second here. Hang on just a second. Uh, thank you, Carl. Hoptman, how are you doing? Uh, Hoptman, my biggest sellers right now are vintage Christmas cards and Valentines. Old paper keeps on. I am 100% telling you that vintage paper and collectibles sells all year round. There is no slow off. I am seriously, the last month was our busiest, busiest month ever on eBay, ever. And last month just whomped it. The other store that I don't share with you, we did more than the $4,200 that I actually did on the store I share with you last week. You know, we sold some items for, you know, $750. We sold a bunch of $250, $250 items, a bunch of $100 plus items, $140 items, $125 items, many $100 items. It was just off the chain all the way around. So, the sales for the summer or, you know, whatever quarter we're in, it doesn't seem to matter anymore. I don't know if it's all the advertisements I'm seeing eBay doing or people are frustrated and they've left eBay, which, you know, if that's what they want to do, fine. I'm not giving up on eBay. I'm just broadcasting my listings in other places and adding more options into my my mix. Again, eBay is, is you know, only a percentage of my business these days. We broadcast out more. Once the sale bright goes, eBay is going to be a smaller and smaller section of it. We still do get a lot of money from eBay, but you know, once I've got, you know, listings on five, six different sites, the same listing, you know, things are going to be a big, it's going to be a difference. It's going to be a game changer. It, it might be to the point where I'm going to have to hire a packer, maybe more, who knows, you know, because right now, sometimes in the mornings with all the items we're selling, like last week, you know, there was two of us packing for a little while, you know, a couple hours on, on one day, just because we sold so much stuff. So anyway, well, thank you, Carl. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, where are we? Press thanks to your vids. I bought three newspapers this weekend from the mid seventies for five bucks. Listen, which was seven, and they sold in the fifteen minutes. Could not find comps. Guess I priced up. It, it just because they sold quick doesn't necessarily mean you underpriced them. If they're the right newspaper, um, you know I price them ahead, and I don't have to have the same newspaper for a comp. You have to have like or similar items to do a comp on something like that. I do appreciate that flipping goodies. I've sold, in fact, I don't think I have, but maybe one box of newspapers left that I haven't listed yet. Every other one's gone, I think. Uh, maybe I have a couple up on the top shelf, but the majority of all the thick newspapers are gone. I usually get 15 bucks or better on most newspapers. Some I've sold for a couple hundred bucks. You know, I had a sinking of the Lusitania not too long ago that we got like, uh, I want to say it was 125, but I could be wrong. Uh, everyone should check out Don's Patreon. Well, thank you, Carl. Uh, I have something in the 40s and 20s, but no sales yet. I'm not sure if you're talking about records on that or paper. Um, 1929, 1940. If those are newspapers, I'm assuming you're maybe you're talking about. Don't even know where the post office is. Laugh out loud. How you doing, Duncan? I know where it is. Um, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the local post office at all. I've had my run-ins and had it out with the uh, post. Well, there is no postmaster technically at my post office. They've been minus one. They've had seven different postmasters in just a couple of years, if that tells you anything. So I hate going to the post office. I, I, I have probably the best um, female uh, postal worker um, who delivers and picks up here. She is the bomb. Um, I actually bought her a gift card the other day, and it's sitting right up over here. So next time I see her, she's getting a dinner for two from us just because she's she's the bomb and that's i consider that a business expense too um it's taking care of your clients so that's literally going to be a um, admin fee on that one in my accounting so um and you're allowed to do stuff like that just like when a uh, drug rep will actually buy lunch for people it's the same basic principle it's it's allowed it's it's a service uh, rendering thing for my opinion 
Uh, let's see here. I bought a huge can of wheat pennies on there the other day. I hope I didn't get robbed. You never know. You never know. A lot of people search through stuff like that before they sell them. They sell the junk and act like it hasn't been searched through. I never, ever believe anybody who says it's an unsearched lot of anything. I never, ever believe anybody. It's just not going to happen. Uh, yeah, the gray farm girl scavenger. How are you doing? Yeah, our grass is a little longer in the back. Um, Anyway, I've got one of those um, propelled lawnmowers. We had a riding lawnmower, but that's when we had like 40 acres we used to live on. Uh, we actually gave it to a cousin who was in dire need. I guess I don't have to worry about next day scans for Etsy and Shopify, though. Yeah, I don't. Next day scans. Um, if, if you get the, the scan sheet, Carl, uh, scanned when they're at your door, you don't have to worry about anything else. As long as the scan sheet shows that the post office got it, even if it doesn't get scanned to the next day, even if it doesn't get scanned to the last day, that scan still shows up. I mean, so I've never had an issue. I, I look at that probably once a day. I've looked at my late shipping rate, and it's still zero. So, um, and again, I only use the master scan sheets for everything pretty much now. If I don't have a master scan sheet for it, I will actually have them scan every one. Uh, yeah, that's just the way I do it. Uh, me too. I ship fast and get, yes, shipping fast is a huge, big difference. Liz for a day. Shipping fast is important. I ship out within 24 hours. I don't care what it is, when it was ordered, if it was paid for before 11 AM that morning, it shipped out that afternoon, every single piece of, uh, of item, everything. Yeah, I used to jam up the Galaxy 5000. They hated me on that Dropbox when they when I used to deliver it or take it to the post office. Like when I was able to, I know what time they emptied it. And um, it was usually like four or five after the post office closed. And I would jam that box up right after that if I finished packing for the next day before we did all the master scan sheets and all that stuff. So they hated me on the Dropbox. I never use the Dropbox anymore. The flap on there actually caught one of my packages in there. This is the first time I got into it with the postmaster and it caught it in the flap and it wouldn't let it go. And the postmaster came out there to get it out and she just went wham and yanked it out and ripped the entire package and damaged the item in there. And she told it was my fault for putting that in the box, which the box is for putting packages in mind you. I reported it. I talked to a district or left a message. No one ever called me back. District manager didn't tell me anything. They wouldn't tell me their boss, nothing. It was just post office can do whatever they want anytime they want. Anyway, uh, no ranting on that, I guess, at this point. So Aaron's uh, slightly east. I'm assuming maybe you're in the general area. I am in the Ohio area, if you did not know that. Uh, let's see here. I had to wait a while behind one person. Yeah, okay, let me see. Go back down. They were NASA, and I was 100 years of reporting for that. One was 100 years reporting. If they were NASA papers, those would have definitely been worth at least 50 or 60 bucks would be my guess. Most businesses, even NASA publishes, and I've had them because we lived in Florida and Cape Canaveral was there. And I went to actually a shuttle launch launch from the, um, the cordon off area where they let in special visitors. I've been there once and we got to see it less than three miles away from, um, I can't remember what the name of the place was, but we knew somebody who was a professor and they got us in there once before. But anyway, companies like NASA produce newspapers for their employees. You probably had um, uh, employment newspapers that were only available to the actual um, the actual uh, um, workers there. So that's probably why those went for good money. And you're talking if they're from the 70s, they're from the dawn of uh, you know the space program. So those could have been worth a lot more than that. Don't feel bad if you if you underprice something like that. People make mistakes. I've made my share. These days, we're just a lot more cautious is all. Oh, thank you, Patty. Um, hey, Don, Liz for a day. It's been a while since I made the live. Well, welcome. Glad to have you, of course. Yeah, if you haven't hit the like button, you know, I'm going to answer what questions we have again. Uh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll have to change the title because um, I don't want everybody coming to see they're going to have Dom on. And I will use that title for a uh, feed with Dom as soon as we can get something going. Yeah, if they were NASA, they sold fast because of that. That's all. Welcome, Laura. Sir Thrips a lot. I found some St. Louis daily newspapers that are complete and completely ascribed the Lindbergh baby kidnapping and trial. They are from 1930. Will people buy them with a strong 
musty smell. You can negate part of that strong musty smell if you take those newspapers. First, get a bunch of the strongest, cheapest coffee beans you can find. Um, grind them up fresh. Don't don't grind them up or buy pre-ground coffee beans. Buy some decent coffee beans, cheap ones. Grind them up fresh. Put them in a sock, not to sock up or a couple socks if it takes that. And you're going to put them in a airtight bag. Use two garbage bags. Put the newspapers in there and leave it in there for like a week. After that process is, you're going to take the coffee beans out. And you're going to shave off some Irish Spring soap. I use a, a cheese grater is what I do when I do that. I've got a big box of it. We've, we had the kids do it occasionally. And you'll fill up a sock with the uh, Irish Springs. Irish Springs seems to work the best. And again, I airtight them in another bag for a couple of uh, uh, days, maybe a little longer, it depends. And at the end of that, then I set them outside if it's summer and I let them air out. Usually it gets rid of most of that actual scent. Um, other than that, you can sell them with a musky scent, but they're going to go for a lot less. I do do that. It may take you a month to get rid of that smell, or at least negate it somewhat. Now, there's a couple other things you can do. Um, they're drastic. Uh, the other thing you can do is to buy a bunch of isopropanol, I think it is, 91%. You're going to have to get a big container and enough to cover those with isopropanol. I, I'm, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I've got... I don't have a bottle here, but I've got a, a, I buy them in the gallon jugs, just FYI, because there's other things you can do with that in the collectibles field. I may touch on that in one of my uh, Patreon videos, but if you soak them in that uh, isopropanol, it will get rid of the scent fairly decently. You'll just have to air that out as well, too. Um, the alcohol will dry up and it shouldn't leave much of a smell at all. And then if once you've done the soak in isopropanol, then you can actually go ahead and do the Irish Springs just for a day or so. And usually it'll smell nice and fresh. Those are the only options. It doesn't always work with the isopropanol alcohol and you have to have the 91%. I would not do that with, with um, Sunday pages though. Those will, it could ruin the ink on there. I've had good luck in the past with some really early ones. I, I soaked a couple... Um, like, uh, I think they're from the 1860s or so, the last ones. Maybe it was Gaudi's newspaper, I think, maybe. Um, but it did get this, the scent out of those, the alcohol base on it. So I, I don't know if it just obliterates the, the molecules of, of mildew or whatever that's causing that. But it will get rid of the scent. It does not get rid of the stains, obviously. So I know that was a long answer, but that's what I've done in the past. Those options. Those are your only options that I am aware of. Yeah, it is what it is, Sue. So you're perfectly right there. Thanks, Sue. That's a true, true on that one. Uh, uh, anyone notice you can't search your sold items on the iPhone app or uh, version of eBay? I don't use any of the phone apps, but many times I've had people tell me that and complain about the apps. The app is a limited version of it. It has a small space to fit on the phone to actually operate on the phone. It's not a full-fledged version. When they remove options, that means they're probably putting in some other options. They have a limited base. I, I took uh, programming as well, too, and we touched and did some phone apps as well, too. I did a VB app for a window-based phone that we were messing around with in the past as well, too. So I do know some of the, the basics on it. I have an IT degree from the, the, the college here as well, too. Um, oh, where were we? But that's the reason why um, they've pulled off features to add other features. And there's always a base on, on how much a phone will run. When, when they test apps like that, I, I've literally seen people test apps in, in one of the classes. And one of my uh, employees actually took a, a high school IT class as well that taught them actually um, how to do some programming in there. And that's the space. You get like a framework of space that you can fill up how you wish. And that's how you actually um, decide on space, at least all the ones that I've seen do. And that's how they show you. So. I don't use the phone for anything, anything at all, other than accepting an uh, offer. Once in a blue moon, if I'm out somewhere, I'll um, combine items. Um, and from the phone, I can't combine items from the phone unless they send me a actual, um, please send me a uh, invoice. Other than that, I do not have an option on my phone to combine and send an invoice. They have to send me that notice for me to be able to do that. I don't know if everybody's like that. I don't know if it's the version of, of the phone I have or what I have, you know, the, the latest version of, um, of uh, eBay. In fact, I've got like five eBay sales, it looks like, or offers. Uh, let's just see here. Yeah, I got quite a few. Um, but anyway, where are we at? 
That is an awesome, lovely money wall, I'm assuming Liz is saying. Um, money wall, yes. Most of those items, I've already pulled out the cheap items, and those have been thrown in a lot. So when I flipped the camera around and showed you all that paper on the shelf, if you didn't see that, you got to see an area you don't usually see in my, my facility here. Those items are the items that are going to sell for $7.99 or more. So anything that's on that shelf is $7.99 or more. I've got 120 some odd thousand pieces of paper on that shelf where it's $7.99 list price. I'm not saying they're going to sell for that. So don't think I've got $10 million worth of stuff here and, you know, I'm, I'm bragging or something. Again, I got nothing into that stuff. So if, if, if we're talking about stock, it's not dead stock if you have nothing into it. Dead stock, you know, death pile, whatever you want to call it. If it's a death pile, it means you got money into it in my book. I don't have anything into it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, if I showed everybody a tour of it, you'd probably get a little bit, <laughs> you'd probably be surprised because I got quantity and I'm not exaggerating. I've got uh, this, the wife calls it the dungeon down here, honestly, because it's just shelves. The area when I flipped it around, I'm in a cubicle of shelves surrounding the whole thing. And then behind this shelf here are more shelves with another cubicle as well. And then some more shelves and then a row that runs down with more shelves and then shelving this way. And then there's the, um, the pallet uh, rack with tons of boxes in it. The closet um, on the side is a big walk-in, and that closet has 12,000 LPs in it, I think, right now. And then on top are probably another, I don't know, thirty or 40,000 different vintage items. I did a Patreon video as well, and I pulled out um, items that we bought years ago. Um, once we, we started to do better and we started to get these sources, I stopped listing the, the cheaper items. Um, well, not all cheaper items, but some cheaper items. And we just started boxing all the quarter and, and dime dime stuff that we were getting. We've got 250 pounds, and I show a bunch of it. I spent an hour and a half showing people part of one box. Um, and we've got 12 boxes of just these little cheapo stuff. So having this amount of stuff is, is a plus for me. If anything happens in the real world or... Again, like Saber's close around here. I don't have sourcing options for many things, so I buy it when I can get it. I could literally probably not source for a few years at all. But again, to keep a keep a picker, you have to keep going back. Otherwise, if you don't show up or you can't come out or you're not interested, they're going to call somebody else. And if they call that same other person so many times, they're just going to probably go to that other person first. So I still pick stuff up when I don't really want to. Uh, again, that's it's just part of the the business that's one of the frustrating points because you you don't want to lose those contacts uh let's see here let's move down get a few more questions i'll stay on for another say 20 or so minutes we'll stop it at 10 o'clock um my god it's full of cards yeah that is a 2001 carry back um hell i actually am uh, i'm gonna well, I won't call it out to you here, but um, that is on my list of things. Um, I'll, I'll just say I built a hell that actually lights up. Um, well, thank you, MFR Solutions. I appreciate that. Uh, Mongoloid, yes, I did just talk to that one. Boxes, how do you store boxes? I line them on shelves. We actually bought a pallet with several other people. I bought a whole pallet, um, you know, an eight-foot pallet, basically, of boxes of, of one size and a half pallet of another. Um, we split those up. I store some in my garage, obviously, and I store the rest with my records um, at my dad's old work uh, workshop. So I have to store some of those, but we buy them in bulk, massive quantity, pallet-wise, because I get them way cheaper that way. You're going to need somebody to go in on you if you're going to be doing that. Even with the volume that I do, I didn't want to sink myself into a whole pallet and have it locked up. That's one reason I don't do like returns and stuff. I don't want want to tie up something with a pallet. When you get a return pallet, um, and I've been to friends' houses who've gotten them. I've gotten one or two in the past, the pallet-wise. It was a lot of time. It's like doing a, a storage uh, unit uh, auction and stuff. It's going to take you weeks to go through all that and the list and all that other kind of stuff, and you're always going to have stuff to get rid of. I don't Maybe if my if my business was going in a different direction, I might have done that. But we just stumbled upon what we're doing now. We never had any goal to be paper people or any of this other stuff. I did books and and uh, and uh, clothing just like everybody else. I've always sold little collectibles on the side part time, but I would have never ever thought about doing this full time um, until I had no other choice at the time. So uh, again, 
this isn't our goal. This was never our goal, but I'm happy where we're at. And this, this is what I want to advance my business on here. So everybody's going to have a different experience. Everybody's going to see, you know, different things here. Only 70 full boxes of backs. Oh no, I've got, I've got way more than 70 Duncan in all honesty. Um, 225 to 250,000 records fills up. I want to say it's close to 1,800 square feet with a little attic area, and it's pretty full, I should say. That's just records. That's a whole different ballpark on there. Um, I actually bought out a storage unit. Um, I'm, I'm not going to call this a storage auction. I bought it from somebody uh, personally, just going straight to them. It was one of my pickers who has passed away, um, and I bought out a trailer that we have a ton of boxes in here. Um, I've shot some video, but I've just never done anything with the video. I was going to do haul video and show you some of the stuff in there. Um, I, he had stuff in, in these big, huge, long. Um, they're like uh, semi-truck trailers that they transport overseas, like the big canisters or containers. He had a bunch of those. I bought out one of those. Um, and it's the wife was his, his wife was uh, very kind, and she let me um, you know, take a little while to get it out there because I didn't have the ability with time. Uh, to get it out there. And I didn't want to kill my employees and stuff. And um, so uh, I, I literally have taken almost two months to bring it all over here. So I might do something with that, but we've got way over 70 boxes. And again, I'm not trying to brag. At some point, it gets to be a hindrance to having boxes. And I don't even know what's in some boxes. When I did the Patreon video with, with just pulling out some, I haven't even seen some of that stuff. I can remember when I bought it. Um, you know, but you always find treasures. I actually found a, a diamond ring in that in one of the boxes I had there. I, I didn't think it would be diamond, but I did show it around and somebody brought out one of the little guns and it does say it's real. So I have a real diamond ring with a diamond about that big that I had in a box that I didn't think was, you know, much. So at some point I probably threw a bag of jewelry and didn't think it was anything. So I got a 14 karat gold ring with a diamond. I don't know carat wise, but I'm guessing maybe it's a carat or less. It does have a little chip in it you can see, but you know, I don't I don't even know how how much I would have had into it. It's been so long since I got that. In fact, I don't even know where I got it at this point. Um, storage wise, it's the same thing. It's just shelving. Everything goes on these shelves. These shelves are from um, Walmart. Not technically Walmart products, but if you go to Walmart.com. You can order two of these shelves with the boarding and everything else for $110. Um, you use your, your um, uh, I think I got a discount on them too. Um, you use your local store as the delivery point and go pick them up. And it was just a flat 110 if I remember right. So if I get new stuff and I just buy some more shelves, they're dirt cheap. I ordered, I think, seven lots. Uh, when we moved to this location, I ordered seven uh, bundles of two. So I got 14 of these shelves and all in one day. And we spent six hours putting them together and putting where we wanted them with a couple employees doing it. So the shelves are great. They're cheap. I had to buy some thicker plywood for the ones with records. So just FYI, uh, and it has enough room to do it too. It's particle board on these, but again, you can buy your own, uh, if, if you wish, and which is what I've done only for the ones with records. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I am seriously thinking this may be my last year doing landscaping. I should be able to comfortably go full time in 2020. Well, congratulations, farm girl. I really pray that that works out for you too. I know you've had a tough one. That would be a nice thing for you, I'm sure. We need a, a group called Backstock Hoarders Anonymous. I don't. I'm not going to call it a hoarder. I know I'm probably behind on the feed, but I'm not going to call this a hoarder. This is bought. I could throw all the stuff out in here away. I could throw it all away. I've already made my money back from the purchase enough to say that, you know, I made a decent profit off of all this stuff. You know, like uh, there were some bottles in there. I bought 12 bottles from a picker for a dollar a piece. I sold one of them for 75 bucks because it was a bitters bottle. So I've already got my money back out of the other 11 bottles. And, and everything I do, I do in those kind of kind of things to buy it in big bulk. I know, again, everybody's, it's not possible for everybody to do that right off the bat. I couldn't do this years ago and I couldn't do this. And I probably wouldn't have had these great contacts if I didn't have the extra time because of, of employees. There's always a drawback because then it means that there's a lot of time before they get here for me to set up four workstations with items to either list, to scan, or to photograph. So, you know, on a given day, there's at least usually four people here uh, doing something related to the business. It just depends on what day of the week it is, 
um, summertime, it's a lot different. So I, I've got to really get up early on summertime. So I still get up, you know, five thirty, six o'clock in the summertime. Um, even when I'm not worrying about taking my son to uh, drill or something like that, just because I start early my day, I can get out of here usually earlier, uh, in the evening, at least spend some more time with the family in the summer. So I uh, switch my schedule around that way. I do like the view of your merchandise better than the green screen. Yeah, I've had that in the past, but I can't mix in. We're heading a path where I, I'm going to be mixing in stuff. Um, I did, uh, for like those in Patreon, I, I paid the money for a, a professional business Dropbox um, to be able to have a better source to do some things um, with. So just FYI. Uh, let's see here. Let me pop down here. I just found a 1953 silvery looking wheat penny. So, uh, when you find the silvery colored wheat pennies, somebody probably in like a school or a classroom has tried to plate them. I find them occasionally. You'll find somebody uh, copper plating a coin that shouldn't be copper or silver plating a coin that shouldn't be silver. And I, I have a few here. Some people do it as a con thing or they'll try to make a 1943. Uh, four or 42 steel penny um, by plating it with like a zinc coating or something like that. Uh, you, most people know the difference. If you, you aren't aware, there are, uh, the only year technically produced, uh, the U.S. government produced the steel penny was 1943, and they, they used the steel with the zinc coating uh, for saving the actual copper for, you know, uh, shell casings and things like that for the war effort. Um, but there were a few that got out from either, I think it was either 42 or 44. There was a couple that got out that were aluminum with the wrong date. And those go for, I don't know, maybe a million dollars. Who knows? I haven't seen one sell in a long time. Um, MFR, I run my FB or eBay all from my smartphone, photos, editing, inscription. It depends on how much you have, I guess. With 60,000 listings in multiple stores, it's not possible from the phone. I can't multi-edit. I can't mess with policies. There's just so many options I can't do from a phone. Again, if you're a one-man operation, you're saving money. It works for you. Uh, it's 100% probably what you should be doing in that case as well. I am a old-school desktop and laptop person. I can instantly fix anything in this building. I know pretty much every ins and out of any uh, electronic equipment, uh, PC wise. Um, you know, I took repairs as well. I have an A plus cert, you know, safety plus, net plus. You know, I've got a Microsoft uh, networking cert and admin. Um, but the, the point of it is I do this type of stuff because even with my laptops, I've upgraded everything in them. I've installed whatever I can. I've swapped out a, a CPU. Um, I got the Optima um, uh, storage in the other one with the Optima memory, and then we've upped it to, I think it has 72 gig on the other one. So we're actually going to be switching over my the PC or laptop that I usually use for live feed, and this, this one's going to be a backup, and we're going to be switching that over to... Um, again, I, I, we run off of multi-laptops just because I've got many employees and they work and move around from station to station. So when there's seven people here, I want seven seven facilities. I need seven uh, computers for them to use. So, And we have a server if, if we get backed up or anything else. I do have a couple, uh, I think three HP minis. When I turn it around, that top shelf has three or four more laptops that we don't usually use and then three or four minis that I use occasionally. HP minis, if you don't know what a mini is. Uh, they work fairly well. They're actually the business model version. So they've got uh, four gig and they'll do listings just fine without any lag. Um, and we have um, a bunch of dropped lines so I can hard hardwire um, ether into um, ethernet into any of the ones in here without running out of space. Um, and we do have the the biggest and the, the best broadband you can get, which isn't very good around here, but anyway. I can't wait until I get enough inventory that I will need shelves. Yeah, um, setting up 14 shelves in one day was just not fun. Let me tell you, it was a lot of work because it's uh, you're using a rubber mallet and the whole works. It's 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 it's, it's a lot of work. Um, but anyway, again, I have employees, so my standpoint and what you have is not going to be the same. Unfortunately, I wished everybody had the same luck and the same experiences, but. It's just not possible. Again, this isn't what I plan on doing. I went to college and earned a master's, and I just expected I'd be working for somebody, as I've done for the majority of my life. You know, if I if I'm not going to be you know working for somebody else, I technically didn't need the master's degree. Um, but I'm 
hundred percent glad I did it. I, it. I did it for me, I guess. So whether I get something out of it, what somebody else would think something's out of it, I've improved my mentality, my, my, my knowledge, my base, my lookout, my outlook on everything. Um, and you know, a lot of the business classes I was very happy to take. I mean, I know firsthand how to run a region that did $11.2 million because that's what I did for, for Einstein brothers. So, you know, um, I, I know the gist of it, but it was nice to see the other aspect of it. And, um, I took bus uh, business 101. I took accounting. Um, you know, I've done the psychology classes and dealing with people and things along that line and public speaking. And I, I took other classes. I, the, the, one of the better ones, if you're going to have employees, project management as boring and, and, um, unuseful as most people think that is project management was a big help because it, it's, it's how I can get this all to work and set up all this project, a project manager is in charge of the entire, for me, the project management or the project that, that, that a manager is going to need to, to manage is my whole business structure. So I look at my business from a project manager standpoint, um, where creep comes in, where things aren't going right. Um, you know, I look at every aspect of that, um, you know, who is going to be involved? What's going to be involved? So that's why I, I'm, I'm good at, at what I do with getting my employees set up and why we've been able to advance. Uh, again, for those of you who are just getting to a point where you've got a bunch of inventory and you're running out of time to list, it's probably time for you to get employees. I don't know anybody out there who hasn't gotten to a, a, a fair level that you know hasn't employed at least an employee or two. Uh, Sue's on here. Sue even hired a part-time person. Um, Mike's another person who hired somebody part-time who's usually on here. He's not on tonight because it's not a usual night, but anyway, um, how you doing, Merrick X7? Yeah, I know people who do, I did landscaping in Florida when I first moved down to Florida for like six months with a friend of mine. Um, like up here, if somebody does landscaping, they usually do like plow service and icing and snow and all that kind of stuff too, but I wouldn't, for what I do, I love what I do. So I'm, I'm not one to be prone to do that. I usually these days just pay somebody to do everything. I pay somebody to cut the grass. I pay somebody to do this. I pay somebody to do that. I used to fix my own car and stuff. Me and the wife even put an engine in before. So these days, everything goes into the shop. I, you know, I don't worry about any of that stuff. Um, it's, it's, my time is more valuable than working on my car or cutting my grass. Even my kids time these days, since they work for me has come more valuable doing my company business than cutting grass and stuff like that too. So, uh, let's see here, Jason, uh, Don, what is your threshold maximum per item price to buy paper items in bulk? Um, in all honesty, I try to get everything a dollar or less paper wise. If let's say somebody walked up with some roster log, um, RPPCs or something like that, I may pay three or four bucks a card, even in bulk, but it's got to be something good. Now, if, if somebody walks up on me and they've got 50 RPPCs of Lake Tahoe uh, places, Lord knows what I would pay individually for those. I might shell out, you know, $100 a piece on all 50 of those and, and pay in cash just to get those. You know, sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to shell out money that you're, you're a little nervous on. As long as you've done your homework and you know what's going on, you know, I don't have a maximum. It depends on the item in all honesty. For the most part, if I'm buying like, let's say 5,045 records, I'm not going to pay more than a nickel max for any of those individual records. Usually it's a penny or two a piece. If I'm buying, let's say a thousand postcards, most people, you can get a thousand postcards for maybe 75 bucks. That's probably a legitimate cost. Um, like at an, even at an auction, you can get them that cheap sometimes. Now you're going to have to hunt and pack. You're going to have to figure out which, which auction houses don't value paper, which ones do and stay away from those. There's many around here that I won't go to just because they think it's worth a lot more than it is. And then in other times they're right on the money and what the cost, what, you know, what I could sell it for. So I bypass that. Um, I don't buy stuff that I don't think I could sell for at least $7.99 for the most part. If it's a, a 78 record, I don't buy or mess with 78 records um, sold individually that are worth less than $15. That's my max on a 78 record or my minimum. I have to at least get $15 out of the record to make it worth my while to list. Now, if, it's, if I can get $15 on eBay... Or let's say I can get $10 on eBay. I may still mess with it and put it up on Amazon because on Amazon, I could probably get 20 bucks for that same record. 
78 records we're talking about with that one though but paper in bulk is cheap if you haven't been to a live auction um, you'll know what I mean if you have especially the vintage antique auctions and if you haven't seen what an auction table cleanup is you're missing out because the, the table cleanups at the end of an auction at the end of a local live vintage auction are the bomb I have bought f a whole table an eight foot table of just scraps for five bucks on many occasions because there was hardly anybody left at the end all the people that come in, usually the auction runs the high dollar stuff first. There's a whole setup when you go to one of these auctions. They already know what they're going to do. They already have the order set. So when you get there, they're going to get the, the stuff that there's the most bidders there for immediately. That's the first stuff that goes out. The high dollar stuff so that they can get these people in and out. They're going to want them to come back too. So it's it, it's a twofold for the live auction. First, it makes the people who want those high dollar items happy because they can get in without waiting for the entire auction to go. That's what they do around here. I can't say they do that everywhere. And, and then secondly, while the money's there, they got the money rolling in. When the most bidders are there is when it first starts from all of my experience from going to all of these sales, um, live auctions and stuff. So by the end of the day, people are uh, running out of money. Some of the auctions I go to may last three hours. So, you know, you'll see through attrition, people have spent all their money. Uh, they won't want to wait to the end. People after three hours give up. Sometimes I don't even show up to an auction until the last hour and just take my chances that way. I, I've, I've almost always come out ahead that way. So, you know, that's just a thought on buying stuff in bulk like that. Oh, let's see here. I... Oh, landscape all year round in Washington. Wow. I better get cracking listen to some of that. Duncan, we list every single day of the week. Um, like today, I, I bet you we got almost 300 items up, uh, in all honesty. Uh, I know Duncan's, Duncan lists a lot, too. Um, how are you doing, Linda? V9 8080, welcome. Thank you, MFR. Two secret archives. Yeah, my feed just disappeared. Yeah, sorry, my feed's just gone. Let's see if I can find out where we were at. Hang on, I'm way off. My feed just totally. Yeah, let's see. Hang on, I think I found where we're at. Okay, so I know I'm behind. I know what with everything going on with the start of this feed, I, I kind of got lost on that. Uh, Hopsman, I'm actually thinking of selling bulk to resellers with all the stuff I got from storage units. I can't possibly list all of this. I've thought the exact same thing. I've been going back and forth. I may put up maybe a couple lots of like 50 or 100 trade cards or posters or something, or postcards. I mean, uh, $5 cards or something you can get. I may still do that. I've been debating on that. I don't want to run into... Uh, a couple other well-known YouTubers who were selling lots and it turned out to be junk. I, don't, I wouldn't want somebody to be unhappy with what they got uh, because a lot of the items I sell or probably you even sell Hoffman might be long tail items is my only concern on that. It's the only reason I haven't done it yet. Is there ever a time a person should take a break from sourcing if they are still listing every day? I would have already taken a break from list or from sourcing had I not had pickers. The, most people go out and source even when they don't need to because they're always hoping for that new score, that great item that they would have missed had they not gone out. Now, I used to have that philosophy. You know, what am I missing? What am I missing? What else is somebody getting? I always used to think about stuff like that. Once I stopped thinking of it that way and just thought about it as quantity, what I got, how the business is going, I don't worry about that kind of stuff anymore. So I, again, there's garage sales on my block that I didn't walk down to, on my own street that I live on that I did not go to. So, you know, I, I'm I'm stocked up. I don't I don't have the concerns that most people have on that, and I don't have anything into this. You know, uh, you see what I sell. You know, um, if you looked at my last what sold on video, and I know I hadn't done one in a little while, but there's thousands of dollars in that video, and I'm only showing you a small portion of stuff in there. So. You know, the stuff's there if, if you want to reach out and sell paper or something. It, it's there, I promise you. There's uh, And even people talk about what about competition? What's the odds of somebody getting a 1905 Toledo postcard with a certain building on it? What are your odds in another city of you finding that? It, it's almost none. So most of what we sell aren't going to be something that I have much competition for no matter what. You know, there's just not enough people on the planet that could dig up all the same items. It's just not practical. 
Uh, let's see here. I'm actually, uh, I got that one. Uh, let's see here. My only problem is the wife hates me storing, so I've made best use of all guest bedroom closets. Yeah, we used to worry about that, too, and the wife didn't like it. I didn't personally like it either, but we're in a, a much bigger place. We've got a lot of space just for eBay, um, and I don't have the storage issues, too. Plus, I've got a facility off, off our main area um, that I actually have storage, into, and a lot of storage, you know. Uh, doing landscape full time, hard on the yes, it is hard on the body. Uh, let me move down here. Carl got my first solid picker last week, and we'll see how it works out. Antiques, small, and paper are like the bomb. I lived on that. That paid every single bill that we had. Little tiny things that would fit in the palm of my hand made us every dime we needed to survive. Every single dime. Um, and again, that's what I discussed in the, uh, Hey Rick, how are you doing? Rick Duke, another Patreon. Garage sales are just a hobby fun for me now. Flea markets are just to make contacts. I do like going to them. Once you get to a point like me, it loses a little bit of the fun of the treasure hunt when you don't go to uh, flea markets and things like that as much. So I do go to a flea market here and there just out of fun. Usually I go with my son. We, we've shot a couple videos here. Um, last month we went to a flea market. I talked about it. We, I just haven't posted. I may post it later on in this year. Um, there's just been so much going on. I, it's just hard to get contact and get all this stuff going. But once you get to this point, like I'm at, it's all money. I don't see anything, you know, uh, like a, if a thousand dollar item walks in my hand, it's just a thousand dollar item. I'm not really excited about that. Sounds wrong. I, I'm excited. I'm glad to get a thousand dollar item, but it's, it didn't, it doesn't mean what it did before because, Thousand items, thousand dollar items. Once you get to a certain point, aren't as seven years ago. If, if I ran into a thousand dollar item, I would be elated, and it wouldn't be something that happens very often. But nowadays, with contacts and, and sourcing revenue and, and and places we get stuff at, I, I see thousand dollar items way more often than I ever thought I would. So, hundred dollar items, I see a lot, um, way more than I thought I would on even the hundred dollar items. And most of the hundred dollar items are like paper. You know, uh, let's see here. I sold uh, those those die hubs I showed in a haul video, um, and I did show those in a haul video. I listed most all of them. So if you type in die hub in my store, you'll see them. I sold two already. I, I spent 130 bucks, and I think I showed the receipt on those. The first one I sold was a Qantas one, I think, and I got 175 bucks for that one right off the bat. The second one sold the same day for 75 bucks. And I think I've got another offer in pending now that I haven't touched on. So everything I do, I do that same aspect. I list some and I get my money back. Oh, let's see here. I have so much stuff back. So I've never stopped sourcing. You never know what you are missing. Yeah, see, that's again, Farm Girl. That's the mentality that I had. But at this point, if I miss something, I miss something. Because I've just got so much stuff here. If I sold everything at, you know, half of what my, my asking price would be on these. I could retire, I would imagine, um, with all of the quantity, just on the records, you know, 200 some odd thousand records at even five bucks a piece. You do the math. I mean, that's a lot of money. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what Duncan's death pile sounds like. Um, I have a death pile of old paper items. You never run out of, of stuff to list. It's not good in this category if you have nothing on hand to list. That's exactly right. You see the picture. That Again, that's just one single shelf with 125,000 pieces of paper. I got way, way more than that. If I could show you around the facility, which my cam won't walk around that far, but anyway. Uh, eBaySingles.com. My connection hooked me up with sheet music and video games last week. Diecast NASCARs in the box the week before. Always be nice and you never know what you might need. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I could have you work here, Duncan, for just a little while if that's what you're looking for. Uh, you have to pay the same as everybody else, though. Uh, let's see here. Backstock hoarders, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say Hoffman is in Atlanta. I, I have checked out his story. He's got some real good stuff in there, too. Yeah, I'm not worried about the bird flu. 
Lex is saying, oh, I'm sure about the baby bird. Same with Duncan. Again, I know I'm behind, but I started off behind, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Laura Cohen. I'm finally working my way through my backlog. I've got about 400 items photographed and 200 of those items logged and ready to list. I'm about to explode growth-wise. List them. That's what I can tell you. Don't, don't take a break off on it. Carl, yes, better than a spider. Yeah, Laura, Alfred Hitchcock music. I actually found one that sounds almost identical to it that's um, royalty-free. Um, because I've got a video. I, I have a video coming out on Alfred Hitchcock in the very near future. Um, I've already got the items uh, recorded part, and I'm just going to add some other stuff into it. Somebody told me there's a public domain Hitchcock that I can use, and I'm just looking for that. Uh, let's see here. We're going to cut it off here in a few minutes again, because this wasn't what we were intending to do in the first place. Laura Cohn, employees can be the bane of my business. They can also be the absolute catalyst in uh, incredible growth. I can tell you I was worried about employees to start with. I had, you know, a lot of employees. Even when I was just a, a general manager running a store, you have over 100 employees in one of those stores. Um, if you work in foods, the, the attrition, the turnover rates, like in some stores, you know, 200%. That means every single person in your staff was replaced two full times if your turnover rate's 200%. Not good, not good at all. Other things like on, on that aspect of it too, it takes time to train people. So, you know, you want to hold on to people. I am lucky. I've got, you know, kids who have friends that wanted jobs that used to come over. Well, they still come over a house, but, and they've spent, you know, nights here. They've been here over the weekend. You know, some have went places with us and traveled with us and stuff like that too. Those are the type of people that work for me. My, the, the Jordan who's been here and you've seen him in several videos and, and like Ian and Justice and, and the other Ian that works here too, you know, they, they've spent nights here. My kids hang out with them and do stuff here. So I, I do trust them in my house. I've trusted them in my house before we had employees. So it, I've got a plus and I've got an in. Um, uh, there's many other people like John or somebody who's going to tell you college or high school students are the best. And they really are, you know, they're, they're happy just to be making a paycheck. So that's how I look at it. You know, that's just my take on it. Um, glad I don't have to go outsourcing. It's cold, wet, and windy in Sydney today. Time. Ohio's no better, honestly. It was 50 degrees this morning when I got up and rainy. Yeah, Carl was in Ohio and he's in Florida. And I was in Florida. I was in Ohio, Florida, and then Ohio as well again. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, Duncan. Uh, Pittsburgh here near Ohio, and it's raining every day. It's been pretty much raining every day for the last two weeks almost this time. 20 minutes north of Seattle. I've been to Seattle once or twice. I've been to Tampa oh, so many times. There's a flea market in that general area we used to go to. Um, Sarasota, St. Pete, I did much better in the Tampa area if you're going to go somewhere. We used to stay off of... Um, uh, the Sand Pebbles on Alternate 19 in Safety Harbor. Uh, and we actually had a, we always stayed at the same one. It was a balcony uh, a hotel room that overlooked the water. It was awesome at night. We used to go down to the the bar and get a bucket of uh, um, little neck clams and just sit out there on the deck. And, you know, the, the, the cool breeze coming in off the ocean, especially, you know, you're looking in on the Gulf. It was just an incredible view. There used to be a, a Joe's Crab Shack, too, we used to eat at, um, just on the other side of the bridge from Tampa. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to get a few more questions, and we'll call it quits. Yeah, somebody said they bought some. Where, where'd that go? Well, hang on. I see a question up here. What do you think of the viability of vintage? Oh, I think I already got that one. Yeah, I guess my feed's like all over the place now. I bought some snapshots of Alice, but they ended up being snapshots of snapshots. Yes, I see that. Yeah, and forgeries are killing it. Yes, that is 100% correct. There is a machine from China that's the, the, the I guess, the best auto pen in the world. It literally is almost impossible to tell the difference. Yeah, that's one reason I don't mess with a lot of that. Elvis is king. For those of you who've probably seen my giant Elvis head that I've got here, we actually kept it. I was going to sell it, but the wife loves it. If you haven't seen it, it's an older video of ours. Uh, an original print as. Yeah, I told you, they're listing them at home. That is not a legit. They probably got a... 
geez, I don't know how you would technically get them without doing a, they've probably altered something and are probably not doing them legit. Anybody doing that could get shut down on those original print ads in my personal opinion. And the other thing that uh, we discussed in Patreon on that type of material, in fact, one of my patrons brought that exact thing up with print ads on Amazon. The majority of returns you're going to get are from people who didn't know that was a print ad because it's not listed in the collectibles section. They're going to think they're getting a magazine or whatever the, the print ad is advertising. We looked at the, in the Patreon video, we actually looked at a massive Amazon seller who um, had some, you know, some, some feedback issues, but they were all tied to, in fact, my Patreon pointed out, they were all tied to people not knowing the item was vintage. They totally misread it and didn't pay any attention. That's going to happen on Amazon. Again, if they're listing them in the home section, as I said, you, they're not supposed to be there. They could get in and get kicked off from doing that in all honesty. Uh, let's see here. Last month, eBay upped my limits to two billion items and two billion dollars, so I'll be good for a month or two left. So now I can list two billion one dollar items. Anyone know a good supplier? Yeah, I, I've got them up to. I don't. I didn't. I stopped upping them. I don't know what their limit is. Maybe two billion. I don't know. We've got millions of items we can list. Maybe one of these days I'll pop a screenshot of that. But I just did it just to see what they would do and see if it gave me any more bonuses. In all honesty. Um, anyway. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Alibaba has some cheap yo-yos. Now, you can make some money off of Alibaba buying direct items to this country. Just FYI. Uh, let's see here. I only got a little over a 1,000 items listed. You got to start. I mean, a 1,000 items is a good start. I am not going to criticize a 1,000 items at all. That is a good start. Again, it takes time just to get to a thousand items. So if every year our our amount of listings increases, we are heading for the hundred thousand listings. But again, that's going to be cross lists, and they won't all be on eBay as well either. Yeah, I think we'll have to cut it off. I want to read this one other one here. Hauptmann, I have sold original German World War II photos on Amazon before. I didn't notice any more in price compared to but it did make money yeah i can't tell you if you can get more out of the photos and paper wise some of the paper items we do get a little more than ebay records has been the one area that i get more money on amazon than i do on ebay as a general rule probably the majority of the time i saw 78 on amazon I'm getting more for it than i would on ebay but Anyway, we are going to cut it off here. I am honestly going to be working hard. I spent seven hours trying to get this feed to be right. It ran fine until we got to Dom's feed in. So um, I'm going to probably give Dom a call here um, as soon as he's off. I know he's going. Um, he's got some things going on. So um, once he gets his uh, stuff situated, we will try and do it again. Uh, maybe I'll see about bringing um, um, – Chris back and see if we can't test it or something like that. I don't know where we're going to go from there, but this month we are, we are scheduling and planning on doing a, a, uh, routine show, uh, besides my normal, um, my normal live show, uh, with me, Chris and Dom. So it'll be a rotational. So each one of us will have it on the show. We'll tie in the same titles and the same, uh, intros and all that stuff. So it'll be uniform. So everybody will get to see the same basic thing. So anyway, I do appreciate everybody being on today. I know it wasn't the normal feed. I know it wasn't what you were expecting. I do hundred percent apologize. I honestly worked seven hours, um, trying any other option we could to get the feed to run straight and we just couldn't do it. So I am, I'm sure it's tied to the outage that shows up on, um, the, the down, uh, report, um, with Dom's area specifically. So again, I appreciate everybody coming on. Have a good day and do good on eBay for us.